Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about Megan. I have been focusing on Harry quite a bit lately, so I thought I'm going to give a, a video on Meghan Markle and her recent trip to this children's hospital. I'm going to talk about why I believe that happened, and I'm also going to talk about her, why she seems to have this affiliation with Diana um, and I'm going to talk about why that would happen. So if you're interested in delving into a little bit of this and for those of you who do not know me, if you're new to this channel, I am an accredited psychotherapist. I have training in behaviour analysis. I have trained in CBT and NLP. So for those of you who want to dive into the psychological aspect of behaviour in regards to, at the moment, Harry and Meghan, then this is the channel for you. So if you don't know what to do by now, then you know that I do the grab your drink of choice. And I've also had people that have emailed in their videos or their pictures, etc. And I'm really pleased with the amount of creativity that people have uh, gone to, the level they've gone to in putting these videos together. Um, so here is another one. And if you want to be part of this, if you want your video to come on this channel, you do not have to appear in the video if you are camera shy. You can do your furry babies, you can do whatever it is, that uh, just be as creative as you like. Um, and this video will appear on the channel. And so here is the new one, this lovely lady who was very creative and did her video. So here it is now. Hello, Bubble family. You should know what to do by now. Grab your drink of choice. Whether it's an ice cold drink, like cherries and berries, or maybe you prefer a cup of coffee. Or would you prefer a cup of tea? A little spot of English and drop in the comments whether you're sitting back relaxing while watching this video or have it in the background and go ahead if you want to add a little something something to your drink of choice because you know as the flag says yup you got it it's five o'clock somewhere so grab your drink and let's dive right in <laughs> oh and someone has decided to make an appearance hello arthur arthur oh what are you doing bubby are you okay arthur are you okay yeah <laughs> what are you trying to do you trying to get up oh you coming to join us yeah he's a good boy I actually what think the real reason is because my cat Pip has just jumped on the bed so he gets jealous and decides he wants to come and be part of it um, to stop Pip from getting involved. Um, so yeah, so he's completely blocking Pip's view at the minute. Um, as you can see, there he is. There's Pip in the corner. I don't know if you can see him. He's really trying to stop Pip from coming to me. He's so jealous. Um, so yeah. You gonna go lay down, Arthur? You gonna go lay down, buddy? You gonna lay down? You gonna go lay down? <laughs> I've got to do a video, Bubba. I've got to do a video. I know. I love you too. I love you too. Go lay down. Hmm. You go lay down. I know. I'll give you some attention afterwards. I promise. I promise. Oh no! You're gonna try and get on my lap. I just want to say that, I just want to clarify that you're a bit heavy now. <laughs> you're a bit heavy now. You want to get up close and personal with the Bubble family? Yeah? <laughs> oh, my lovely boy. You're my lovely boy. Are you going to go lay down? Hmm? you going to lay down? Come on then. Good boy. Go and lay down. Let mummy work. Good boy. <laughs> he is funny so yes today the um video is regarding as I, well okay so i know a lot of you have often spoken about and even i have of the way that megan seems to have this obsession with diana and i would actually say that it's a kind of a crossover i would imagine it started with an element of diana i felt that she used that as a way into harry there's Pip. Hello, Pip. Um, 
but I would also say that her obsession then stems across to Catherine as well, the Princess of Wales. And I would imagine that Catherine being given the title of Princess of Wales would have angered her very much. What I believe is she has seen, so this is Meghan, she has seen the way Diana was loved and adored by millions of people. Now, Diana had her problems. I'm not going to say sit here and say that she was a perfect human, but I don't believe any, pers uh, any person is perfect. However, what I do believe is that Diana, as, as much as she was a very... I think she had a lot of troubles, I'm going to be honest, but I can understand that given how she come into this at a very young age and thrust into the limelight. I don't think no matter how much you, um, whether you want to be famous or whether you want something or think something, I don't think anything prepares you for the level of scrutiny that you can potentially get. And Diana was, was very young when she got into the royal family. There was already issues in regards to her family. So that would have affected her as a person anyway. So then obviously she meets uh, and gets with uh, Prince Charles and he's obviously thrust into this as well because he doesn't love her. But I do think he came to, I think he came to love, love her. I don't think he was in love with her, but I think he really, in the beginning, he did try to make it or from what I believe, he did try to make it work. However, I think the love for Camilla was too strong. And as soon as he found a way to perhaps have the relationship with her in secret, unfortunately, that then took over. And I think he tried his best with Diana. He just didn't love her how, in a way, she deserved to be loved. And I believe that Diana had always just wanted to be loved and I and I and I think that that stems from a lot of her childhood background so you know she's searching just to be loved uh, and looked after and I think she thought that was going to happen with Charles and unfortunately it didn't so I, I think that during sort of Diana's background then kind of the sort of jealousy would then take over she was angry she was hurt and as we know a lot of people lash out when they're angry and hurt so I think that that's a lot of what she perhaps did in the beginning then of course then she had children as we know Prince Harry uh, and Prince William and I think that to some degree it changed her however I unfortunately think that she then transferred a lot of the, the things that she felt in regards to uh, Charles then became the focus with the children. Like she, it's, It was almost as if she didn't want them to love him more than her and she didn't deal with things very well. And we know that she used Prince William as a confidant quite a lot of the time, I think, you know, and that's why I think Harry's behaviour started very young. So it was easy for me to see how Meghan found a way in with Harry, you know, with Harry having this anger. I feel this underlining anger with his mother. I think there was an element of a massive element of jealousy with William. And so even though he possibly masked it a lot of the time, it was definitely there. So, of course, when she passed away, when he was, I believe, 13, William being that little bit older, it was easy for everyone to look at Harry as the baby. Um, and don't get me wrong, any losing any parent at an early age is devastating. So, and especially being thrust into the public eye. And when he didn't, in, uh, is it in his book or something, when he said he was angry with the public, like, you know, you didn't even know her. I would say it's probably one of the only moments of Harry being truthful. I can imagine him being pretty angry with the public, um, but not in the sense of that they deserved that. It was, it was, I feel probably angry at himself and he kind of just projected that onto the public for being angry and crying and grieving over somebody they didn't really know. Um, so it was easy to see that Megan would find a way in in regards to that. So she did what we would call in the world of psychology, psychological warfare. So she would home in. It was trauma bonding. So she found a way in. And what I would imagine 
and again this is just my perception of understanding people's behavior is that she possibly told harry a similar story not that her any of her parents have passed away but i would imagine that she told harry a victim story of how terrible his her father is and how her mother was subjected to all of this stuff in at the hands of um her father and that she grew up um being quite sort of dominated by the her father um that he was a very mean and horrible person that's why when she become famous he tried to get money from her she would have painted a really terrible victim story so what then that would have done is that would have created Harry to then adopt the rescuer. So he would have seen what he couldn't do for his mother in some subconscious way. Even though, don't get me wrong, I don't think Harry has got a lot of respect for his mum. I don't think he's got a lot of respect for women. But I think this is on a subconscious level, there's a part of him that felt that he could save Meghan in a way that he couldn't save his mum. And that would have been the way he initially came into this. Now, what I would imagine is that would have been very fleeting. And I know that some people have said that Harry was obsessed with uh, Meghan. Now, I believe that, yes, that's very possible in the beginning, but this would have been sexual. I believe his obsession with her would have been that she would have said and done anything to create him to bond with her. So she's created this story. She's come in with this, you know, I want all the things that you want. I want to be a humanitarian. I want to you know go to Africa I want to do all of these things that you want you want that this was what your mother wanted to do and so then Harry then saw someone in Meghan that was similar to his mum which is what we've heard because he said this before now the thing is with Harry is that he he has what I would class as probably quite a low attention span so at some point he would have started to get to become bored with her so Meghan's obsession with Diana was really her hook for Harry and so this is why um, and I've said before that I think that Harry has a touch of Oedipus complex and he's definitely got arrested development. So she would have found this way in and, and she would have kept this going. So what I'm going to show you is a, a, com a compilation of a little video that I've done to show some areas where Meghan has pretty much mirrored Diana. Now, I know that there's probably a lot more out there, but as much as I would love to have all the time in the world, this is just the bit that I could find. And I think this really does show you the level, um, even subliminally, where she's the, the, the way she phrases things, the way she the, the words that she uses, the way that she dresses, um, that she's really started with this um, obsession with Diana. Now, the reason why. Now, I'm going to show you this video and then, obviously, as always, I ask you to drop things in the comments of what you think. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about that um, afterwards. On the piece of paper and said, this is what's expected of you. There's no class on how to be royal. Just like Princess Diana, Meghan Markle says Australian trip changed everything. Being around Australia. After we had gotten back from our Australia tour, which was about when things really started to turn. So are you saying that there were hints of jealousy? It's with the media attention came a lot of jealousy. I felt compelled to perform. Well, when I say perform, I was compelled to go out and do my engagements. We were doing our job. Our job was to be on and to smile. It it's abroad being blocks of my passport all that gets turned over and then when we were married they said it would go quietly and it didn't and i believed him stupidly i believed that and i regret believing that well anything good i ever did nobody ever said a thing never said well done or was it okay i guess i had felt that it had never occurred to anyone that i that i wasn't okay it was isolating because right now i could not feel lonelier and diana's uh, mentally imbalanced i am concerned for my mental welfare i was crying out for help i needed to go somewhere to get help i didn't like myself i was ashamed i was really ashamed to say it at the time megan's emotional revelation that she struggled with suicidal thoughts mirrors what di confessed to the world 25 years ago were you thinking Thinking of harming yourself? Were you having suicidal thoughts? Yes, I did. Yes. And just like Megan, the princess said, the royal family did nothing to help her. How did you cope with that? Well, obviously there were lots of tears. And every single day I was coming back from work from London, I was coming back to my wife crying. Was this completely out of character for you? Yes, very much so. And this is not who I am? Because I am a very strong person. I'm supposed to be stronger than that. Well, there were three of us. Three of us. Just the three of us. I'm very protective about my friends. 
And one of the people that I reached out to who's continued to be a friend and confidant was one of um, my husband's mom's best friends, one of Diana's best friends. I wait my husband's decision or which way we are all going to go. And you made a decision that saved, well, certainly saved my life. And here was a fairy story that, that everybody wanted to work. Yeah, greater than any fairy tale you've ever read. No one sat me down with a piece of paper and said, this is what's expected. Now, if I've been able to, I have masked her voice, uh, as you can see, it's because I know that so many of you, myself included, struggle to listen to her voice. Um, so hopefully I've managed to do that. If I haven't, for some reason, I do apologise and I appreciate that, uh, that it's been obviously quite difficult to listen to. Anyway, so as you can see by the video, you can see that there are massive similarities to the way Megan has... Uh, spoken about things and the things that she's watched and studied regarding Diana. Now, where does this relate to uh, Catherine? Well, I think that actually her obsession has, is Diana in a way is, is becoming the new Diana. And I think that that is what she's done. But what she's also seen is that Catherine in her mind, now I'm not going to say that Catherine is the new Diana because I think Catherine is a woman of her own right and I don't feel it's fair to say, I, I would say that if, she, if you're going to say that anyone is more like Diana, the good elements of Diana, then Catherine is definitely this. But to say that she's um, the new Diana would be wrong because Princess Diana was Diana and Catherine is Catherine and she is her own person and I think it's not right to compare her to to somebody but we're talking about how Megan would see this Megan would see that Catherine is has got everything in a sense that Megan it's not that Megan wants but Megan sees as the ideal so she sees that she's with a partner that loves and adores her they've got three beautiful children they've got fam they've got two families that absolutely adore her um and she is now loved by the public. She has everything. So if you're looking at that in comparison, if you're going to compare to Diana in a way, it's a very similar situation, albeit that I think Diana unfortunately didn't have the family side of things that she would have loved to have had. But in a sense, Catherine has, has got everything and, and, it, and deservedly so, because in my opinion, Catherine is a beautiful person inside and out. And Good people, in my opinion, attract good people. Um, so I think that Megan's then transferred this jealousy and obsession then onto Catherine because as much as initially she wanted the love and adulation that Diana had, she now sees that Catherine is coming up, which is all she's... So that's why all she's ever done is try to go after her. And I think initially she did that by when she first come into meeting Harry, I believe. And, I, and, and again, this is just my opinion, but knowing narcissists, the way they're never satisfied with what they have, they always want to go after the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So in my opinion, she would not have been happy just with Harry. So she would have wanted to somehow sabotage the relationship with her and William. I think her she had her eye on William, not because she loves William, but because she sees William as the future king. She knows deep down that Harry has no uh, potential of ever being the future king of England, but she sees William has that. Now, does she sit and categorise and think, well, how is this conceivably possible? What am I going to do? Am I going to separate uh, William and Catherine and then suddenly Ca William's going to fall madly in love with me and... Um, and I'm going to then suddenly become queen. Do you know what? The, that I would say that deranged in their head that they, they could believe that could potentially happen. But what I believe is that what she started to see was that William wasn't interested in her. And this would have angered her, which was why I then believe we had the alleged affair rumour. So we know that this was started by people that were connected to Meghan. So I believe that's what she did. Again, we have the fact that I also think this was transference because Harry was not being faithful to her. I don't believe for one second that Harry was as, as obsessed with her as what we were made to believe. I think this was 
for all intents and purposes, lust. And lust does look very similar to love. However, what happens in relationships is, and this is why people feel that love at first sight happens. So I'm not saying that there are not exceptions to the rule. But generally speaking, when you find somebody very attractive and lust comes into it because it mirrors very similarly in the feelings, the endorphins and all of those things to love people. And when they fall in love with somebody, when it starts off with the attraction, people believe it's love at first sight. When actually it's very hard. And I'm going to say this on a very pragmatic level. It's very hard to love somebody because you have to know somebody inside and out to love them to get to know them. And it's very hard to do that with somebody you've met for the first five minutes. So what tends to be is that you have, you actually find something very deeply attractive about that person. And it doesn't mean to say it's their looks, it could be their personality. And that gives you this rush of endorphins, you feel this deep connection with this person. But then as you get to know them, you fall in love with them. And but it just blends in very nicely and becomes this deep, new in a sense this amazing relationship and so to you you fall in love at first sight and at the end of the day if that's how you want to believe that who am I to take that away from you because I think it's very romantic and lovely and, and in a way I want to believe that too so we'll go with somebody fell in love at love at first sight but with Harry and Meghan I don't believe this is the case I think they fell in lust well he did I think she just saw him as an opportunity and I've said before that I think this started with Andrew I think she once he ghosted her I think she made it her determination to get into the royal family in some shape or form to get to get him back in some way so I think that so she found her way in in regards to the Diana the sort of pretending to sort of mirror Diana and then she set her sights on William what she didn't anticipate, I believe, was that William had no interest in her. William is actually a decent guy because I think Meghan believes and all narcissists believe that they are the most attractive person on the planet. That everybody that comes into their orbit finds them attractive or wants to be friends with them. They believe they are so special. So when somebody rejects them, they cannot deal with that. And then so then you have what is narc revenge. So. He rebuffed her. He decided that he didn't particularly like her. She realised that she couldn't come between them. So she then set her sights on trying to do other things to damage the relationship, which is why I believe the affair rumour started, why that she's potentially done other things. Now, again, this hasn't worked. So, of course, th then you would find that a narcissist would then set her sights on then bringing other people, which is we call them the flying monkeys, they get other people to do their bidding while they don't get their hands dirty. So it's plausible deniability then becomes, well, I didn't do anything. That wasn't me. I can't help it if other people say that. I can't help it if other people do that. That's not my responsibility. And that's how they manoeuvre. So they slowly bring in other people to do their bidding, which is why she's had these sources that say these things. When actually fundamentally most of them come from her and they've done this unfortunately with their own families as well so unfortunately megan has done the very same thing with her five potential friends which went out and attacked her father and i've said this before i believe her father was sadly set up in that photo uh, opportunity that happened i absolutely believe that all he tried to do was uh try to in a way look smart he didn't want to be seen as what the media was portraying him as and he got thrown to the wolves and I unfortunately think the same has happened with Samantha anyone that has tried to go up against them even down to people like us the, the youtubers or the people in other platforms when you try to speak out or if you're close to pr exposing them they will go all out to attack you, which is why we now have the cult squad and why we have other people that do their bidding, which is what they do. They don't get their hands dirty. They have other people that do it for them. So this is why Megan has now got this obsession with Catherine, because she sees that no matter what she does, because narcissists don't realise that the angrier they get the more they expose themselves because they can't help it, especially if they have a public uh, persona, public forum. 
they can't help it. They do not want to see the person they're obsessed with winning. So they will do whatever it takes and they will do things that are illegal. They will do things that are underhand, just shady, whatever it is. They don't care as long as they're not caught. Which is why, unfortunately, social media is a perfect breeding ground for someone like Megan because they can hide in an, an anonymity. If you think for one second that Megan has not got a social media profile or Harry hasn't got a social media platform profile, you're very sorely mistaken because they absolutely have. Her obsession with rewriting her brand, rewriting who she is, is about Catherine. It's not now necessarily about Diana because Catherine has come up in her own right. And what angers me is still we have these media puff pieces that portray Meghan as the new Diana. They don't do their research. They don't look at the fact that they are responsible for one of the biggest trolling fan bases on the planet. They don't look into things like that because... Or, albeit that even if, I, I would imagine, even if social media was around when Princess Diana was around, I don't believe that she would have been okay with a fan base attacking her family the way that Harry and Meghan are okay with the fan base attacking the family. So Meghan's obsession is growing and growing, which is why we have her constant rebrands, because she'll try something, it doesn't work. So she'll try something again. It's like throwing mud at the wall and seeing which one sticks that's exactly what we're doing you know so this visit to the hospital is another thing it is very hard to in a way attack somebody for visiting children but if you look at the difference in when you see say for example diana or uh, william and catherine or any other members of the royal family, when they visit the children, a lot of the time you see them interacting and playing with the children. What we had with Meghan was, and I found it a little bit amusing that there was about 10 people in the whole room, was Meghan reading books, which is something that she does because she becomes very animated. Um, and it's very almost fake. I, I don't, you know, we never really see her just sitting down, getting down and dirty with children and playing, apart from the one time when they went to a school where they showed her five minutes digging in and planting a flower or something or whatever it was, I'm not sure. But it's very difficult to to criticise that because she's she's with children. But I'm going to criticise it because I believe in all the time that we've seen, this is very similar to when she visited Rwanda and she used her photographer, Miss Anne Harriman, to then uh, pull some of the children in, and, and have their photographs taken as a PR move. Now, there's, this was supposed to be a, uh, a surprise visit. Well, if it's a surprise visit, how comes there was a cameraman there? How comes there was someone there taking Polaroid photographs and then she's sitting there having Polaroid photographs taken and handing these photographs, which in all honesty, these children didn't even look as if they really knew what was going on. And then not only that, she goes against royal protocol by signing. And even celebrities know you don't sign anything. If you watch a lot of celebrities now, they won't sign things because then their signature is out there and they don't want that. But so to me, this actually shows you how desperate Megan is to be seen as somebody famous, because that's the sort of thing you would do when you're an up and coming, say, somebody that's up and coming in the celebrity world and you're very new and you go out for the first time and someone goes, oh, my gosh, can I have your autograph? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Um, whereas a lot of the bigger celebrities don't do that now. So I think in a way it shows the desperation in Meghan that she's so wanting to be famous that, and, and loved that she's willing to sign her, her name to a photograph. But, but who turns up with that? That's not a surprise. That's that clear to me that's been set up. So this was not a surprise visit. But again, she's utilising children. And if you look at some of the pictures of these children, they look so uncomfortable but there's no sitting down, talking with them, a bit like what we have. Sorry, my light constantly goes out. 
Now, when we have the royal family sitting down, we have them discussing things and chatting and talking with and interacting and playing. You know, we see them going, oh, lovely Princess Catherine. And, you know, we don't have that with Meghan. It's very staged, very forced. Um, like I say, she just does a photograph with them, hugs them, and then that's it. It's done. And then it's like, cheers, thanks, bye. And I think, again, it just shows you that she doesn't understand children. She doesn't. There isn't anything maternal about Megan. And children pick up on that. And I think that they see that. But this is what she's doing. And the fact that she did this event, if you want to, whatever you want to call it, this photo PR move, uh, I think it was the day or the day before um, the Princess of Wales made her announcement regarding her health issues. But again, Megan is applauded because she hung on to those photographs for a week and a half. Of course she's going to. Megan may be many things, but I don't think stupid is one of them. I think she's very calculated and you've got to also remember that her PR are behind this as well, her management team. So they're probably going, if you put these photographs out straight away, because I would imagine that Megan probably wanted to, but they're probably going, you're going to get slated. But instead of the, you know, the media kind of, being actually honest, it, it's so obvious. Of course she held on to them because she knew that if she didn't, she would get slated. It would be about that. So she held on to them for the least amount of time possible. Is it like 10 days or something like that? And then she released them. But the fact is she had this somehow conveniently this situation happen around the same time as Catherine made her, her video. Now, okay, you could argue the fact, maybe they didn't know, maybe Megan didn't know, but it seems a bit of a coinky dink that the very day that Catherine makes this announcement, she does something like this. And of course she uses going to visit children, which she has not done. She's gone to visit children in schools occasionally and again, I feel that she's utilised that. Let's not forget you, Baldy, where she turned up and did the most tasteless thing possible. But again, the media didn't, didn't slate her for that. If it's being exposed, it's for PR. It's as simple as that. The difference being with the royal family is that they are highlighting charities. But the fact is, if you look at it, like I say, there was about 10 people there. You know, so I think that this this whole thing with her obsession, it started with Diana, but I do believe now it's come up where she's initially thought that she could be the new Diana. But now she has seen how loved and respected Catherine is, and especially given that even when not in the public eye, everyone's talking about Catherine. Everyone. And this would be something that Meghan would absolutely hate. Narcissists hate the person that they see as the one that they go after. They hate seeing them win. All the time they're winning or being seen as better than them, they will hate that. And so they will do whatever it takes to try and drag that person down. So, so now I think all they're attempting to do is undermine the royal family. They want Princess Catherine and Prince William to be seen as unpopular because they know that as soon as William becomes king, all bets are off. But I think that William, Prince William, is furious. And I think that when it comes to siblings... When you cross a line, it's one thing to, say, attack him as a brother. But when you go after his wife or you're part of attacking the children, I feel that there's nothing that you can do then after that fact to come back from that. And I think now Harry knows that, which is why we are constantly getting Harry still doing the odd thing and Meghan doing things as well, is because they know that there's nothing they can do to to gain that forgiveness from Prince William and Princess Catherine. You know, I think Catherine's definitely a softer person. She's probably somebody that wanted initially Harry and William to sort things out. But I think that once Harry crossed that line and became part of going after her, and like I say, and been part of like the Netflix thing and tacking the children and things like that, now that that's it. The one thing as a mother you don't do 
you don't go after somebody's children. No matter what you do, that's the lowest blow that you can do. You know, it's one thing to bully a person, but you then bring their children into it. That crosses a line. There's a, and there's, there's always a line that you cross that you can't come back from. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think about this um, visit to the hospital? Do you agree with me? Do you have your own thoughts and opinions? Um, I appreciate the fact that I'm not always clued in and up to date. As I've said before, if you don't know and you're new here, I do work full time. YouTube is not my full time occupation. It's like I have two full time jobs, YouTube plus I work full time. So I don't always have my finger on the button of as soon as something comes out. Um, I also want to say that thank you to everybody who has given me the love and support in regards to um, Dan Wooten doing his piece on uh, doing his piece on the cult squad and mentioning my channel. Sadly, as I suspected, the bullying that went on on Twitter has now filtered across to Substack. I'm not going to lie, I did expect it to happen. I hoped it wouldn't, but I did expect it and I wasn't disappointed. But for anyone reading the comments, um, and I think what I'm annoyed at myself about is that I, I took the bait. I think I forgot for a second my training. I forgot what, what I had done before. And I took the bait and I bit back. But you know what? I didn't delete the comments. So if anyone wants to go and read, they can see what the person was saying about me. They can see my responses and they can then make that decision for themselves. Hopefully you will see the type of bullying that I've had to deal with and the people that are responsible. Um, but I will say that there are people that have stuck by me and I really do appreciate that um the other thing as well is that people have asked me about interviewing Lady C all I can say is I am trying to get hold of her I will if I can hopefully get an interview with her and I will be putting that up on here if if I can and that's to do with her new book so in the next video just so you know I will be talking about the thing that I promised last week um, it's going to be quite exciting so I hope that you guys stay tuned for that if you want to know any details they're always in the description box of my channel my PO box if you want to write to me email address um, if you want to send me something like I say the PO box is there buy my bubble merchandise join me on other platforms uh, my other channel tea and therapy um, it's all all in the description box of every single video um, if you want to join Dan on Substack, if you haven't followed him and supported him already, it is free. Um, if you want to just join up, there are other options if you want to. But the link to that is also in the description box of my video too. So in the meantime, take care to the next video. And as always, I love you. I appreciate you. But most of all, I respect you. So take care. Bye bye. Mwah.